Hey, thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about how to use custom parameters in Mosaic. And I've got a bunch pre-built that we use every day, so I'll just kind of tour you through them and how we use them and different ways you can use custom parameters. So let's get started. So for starters, I'll start a new job. And I'll just call it test custom parameters. room and okay so for starters the first thing I want to show you is how we did a plug cutout in an island uh, island cabinet so where I live it's uh, electrical code to have an electrical plug in in kitchen islands so we were getting a bit tired of constantly having to cut them out on site so created a custom parameter in order to uh, allow us to cut it on the CNC machine so it cuts through if it's on the side of the cabinet it cuts it through this the add-on panel and the case of the cabinet as well um, and if uh, if it come if it's on the back of the cabinet then we have a back panel that has uh, two custom parameters set into it so that it sh it's uh, it'll show that first I'll set in a three drawer cabinet I think I'll do it on an island instead of a wall like this. Let's get rid of that. Let's go back to room. Oh, it's gonna make me do, I'll just make it an invisible wall. Okay, so I have a few cabinets that I made specifically for this, and there's only a few things that I changed to make them work. It could pretty much make anyone do it, but I uh, specifically like these ones, uh, to be separate as island cabinets. That way I can isolate them when I'm drawing it out. So for one, this three drawer island is a three drawer bank and I've added a few options to make a pop-up like this pop-up. So the reason that I've done this is so that I can tell the custom parameter which side I wanted to do a cutout for. Maybe I want neither, but in this case we'll say uh, left side. And I done it so that you you're from the side you're facing the drawer faces from that's the side that it's putting it out so on the outlet on the left side so you set that you click OK and then if I click double click this and then I hit 3d view and then I view my left side you got an outlet plug so this cuts out the outlet and the add-on panel I'll just show you real quick uh, uh, filled here. Oh, sorry, perspective. High detail. Yes. So you can see it's cutting through both. Now, another nice feature too is it gives you a visual reference that is interfering with the drawer. Um, another thing that we'll do is I'm going to set this on the left side view so you can see my plug cutout and wireframe. Because a lot of times you have to also shorten this top drawer so I might as well show you how to do that too while we're at it so in my parameters I have all these custom param uh, all these parameters that I inputted with a bunch of formulas in here that moves this where I want it to be so uh, I would probably want that two from the top and that moves I have two operations one on the applied panel and one on the cabinet this one applies to both uh, this one applies to one of them and this one applies to the other so let's say I wanted three from the back and this one I want three from the back and the reason I wanted them separated is because sometimes I want to extend this let's see here go to the top view sometimes I want to extend this add-on panel past a little bit or maybe I want to use this add-on panel as support for my countertop and I want to extend it like 12 inches past I want to be able to isolate and move that where I want it um, so that it's it's where I want it to be so that's why I made a second uh, parameter for the add-on panel this allows me to change the orientation whether I want it horizontal or vertical uh, that allows me to do that so now you can see I have operations there and it's gonna cut it out I set it up as a pocket so it's just pocketing out the whole piece which in some ways is it's a little bit more on tool wear but it's a little nicer in the fact that there's no big chunk that flies out when you cut it out. 
Uh, so yeah. Now I'm going to show you uh, how to. Oh, let's let's open that up again so you can see. So I just want to shorten this drawer, and it go, works differently if you have metal sides or if you have uh, melamine boxes. I'll just show you for melamine boxes, and I'll switch it so you can see both. So if you have melamine boxes, which is currently set up as, you just click adjust. Um, you click the face you're on, you click adjust, and then you change your depth here to, you want to keep it to what a, um, you know, the, the depth that you need it to be. In where I am, it's in increments of 50 millimeters, so I want to reduce it by 50 millimeters. And as you can see, it's still not enough. I'd have to move this more, which I can do. Maybe I'll just go two and two. And then I'm pretty much out of the way here. So that way you can see I'm totally clear of my outlet plug. Uh, the other option to do, let's just take this, get rid of that. Click OK. The other option is to take your, let's just override this. So if you had metal sides, you'd have a list of drawer slides like this. So mine would probably jump to legacy. We'll just go to legacy endurance. So click OK. Oh, that's too high. Uh, let's go with the 88-550. So as you can see, 550, way too far back. You literally just click overrides, and then you jump it to the next size. So I think 500 is going to be too big still, but let's try it. And it's the same for Blum Legra box or Blum Tandem box. It's all the same, same process. They have to, I'll, actually, let me just scroll. You see Blum Legra box has a billion different heights and depths. You just click the one you want. And Tandem box, heights and depths. And then here we're going to go 88. I could probably go 126, 450. Let's try that. Yeah, that looks more accurate. So clearing of the box and you shorten your drawer so that it's not going to hit the electrical box. So yeah, that's basically how we do that. And I'll show you how I got to this point. Uh, should I save it? Yeah, I'll save it. So we go to edit job parameters. Then we go to uh, custom parameters is down here. First, I'll show you how I set up my own parameters. So you go into the other, and then here you can just add one. So add, you know, custom parameter that is called, I don't know, whatever. Custom parameter, and then a description, and then is it a number, is it a yes, no, is it an option, max value, minimum value, and then you can call that up, the parameter name, you can call it up while you're uh, creating formulas in your, in your custom parameters. So like here, I've set your, the parameter name as ebox W or ebox H. So that way I can set my height and width with the custom parameter. So then once you've set these up, and I have some for pre-drills, so it's pre-drilling for the left side of a gable, from, for like cabinet to cabinet. I have some pre-drilling for an add-on panel stuff like that, just pre-drills a clearance hole so I can just fire an inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter screw in there. So, <clears throat> excuse me, custom parameters. So this is a really crazy menu, and if you talk to a mosaic trainer, they're gonna tell you, ooh, try and figure out a better way to do this than, than custom parameters, because there's a lot of ways you can add, add operations to parts uh, that aren't so, um, top tier. Basically, this is going to override anything that you do. So if I want to edit, you know, a cabinet side that already has one of those cutouts in it, if it has a custom parameter like this, it's not going to, you're not going to be able to edit it. It's going to override it every time. So in my case, because I'm not really doing any edits, I want my edits to be done already. This, you know, if I, the only editing I was doing was adding uh, outlet holes to the side, which we don't want to do that anymore. So that's why I added it to a custom parameter. 
it's automatically added. There's also some cool features in here that you can uh, set so that it'll, uh, it'll do it the right way. So you can see this one, I have it as a wall cabinet to cabinet pre-drill. So basically an upper cabinet, so cabinet to cabinet pre-drill. So every left side of the gable that has a cabinet next to it gets pre-drills for, for screws. It also creates a nice consistency for your installers. So they're installing for you. The screws are always in the exact same spot. There's no, uh, there's no question and it saves them a bit of, you know, fighting and clamping and, you know, it's, it's nice that way. So let's go to, so what I'm trying to do is modify a part. There's lots of things you can do. You can add an operation, modify an operation. This can get crazy. You can go nuts with this and absolutely, uh, you know, have a totally custom cabinet. In this case, we're just doing it for what, you know, in my personal opinion, what a use case scenario for a typical cabinet maker is going to be for custom parameters. A lot of these other crazy things, you're, you're probably going to end up doing, uh, you know, other types of part templates or joint templates, stuff like that. So if you then go to the products tab, it'll, you'll be able to isolate whether you want it to happen to a wall cabinet, a tall cabinet, a base cabinet, standard 45 or 90 degree cabinet. So there's lots of things you can isolate for each cabinet. So for us, I wanted to do wall cabinet and really for every, every different iteration of an upper style. So that's why I checked everyone there. And then the nice thing too, is you can also have a, uh, adjacent product options. So if you have a cabinet on the left, cabinet on the right, cabinet on both sides, you can have it only apply those operations when your cabinet is within that specific parameter. So for me, cabinet is on the left side, then I want to pre-drill for screws to it. So that's why I have that little checkbox done. And then you go to the parts tab. So here you want to isolate what part you want to do it to. So I want, to part, I want to do it to an unfinished end on the left side, only the left side of the unfinished end. Then I want to change the operations and I'm adding, as you can see, screw holes. Let's go to the operations here. So I have four holes, two. Some of them aren't showing on this particular drawing, but they are all set by operations here. You see at my, uh, let's go to my parameters. You can see my PDH, pre-drill height. So height minus pre-drill height. Everything's ran by parameters. And parameters and formulas. So that's where things can get really powerful. If you have something specific you're trying to add, you can almost certainly do it with a custom parameter. So that's how you add a custom parameter. And then the last thing you'd have to check off to make sure that it's working properly is that this little parameter, use custom parameters value, is set to yes. If it's set to no, you're not gonna get any custom parameters. It's also nice if you're trying to, edit, like I said, a custom parameter overrides everything. So if you're trying to edit a cabinet, you can turn off custom parameters on that cabinet by loading this UCPS, UCPS uh, and then changing that to no. So because I use it for everything, I always have it checked as yes. So that's one. And then the other thing you can do, so, it's, so that's pre-drills. I have a lot of different pre-drill ones. Uh, and then I have my outlet on the left side, outlet on the left for the add-on panel, and then outlet on the back for if you have a, a back panel or whatever. So let's, let's check this left one. So the nice thing here is that, uh, let's go to products. You can actually select whether you want it to call out a product option. So unless I have outlet left checked as yes, this will not apply to this cabinet's uh, cabinet part. So for it to call out this, uh, for to get the cabinet to have this call out, outlet left, you, you want to make sure it's spelled exactly the same. So you want to copy that. So we're going to just cancel. It's already saved. Just click okay. 
So what I've done is in my main library over here, I've added, go to the price tab, and here you can add, well actually let's do it there so you can see what, how different it is. So here, price, here you can actually add, so add, paste that name. You wanna have a price for it, you can add a price and then click OK, and that way you have it. I'm gonna delete that one. And yeah, so that's, you can also price it per square foot of the cabin. There's lots of pricing methods for this. For me, it's like 50 bucks a shot, because this is really just a whole, um, so yeah. That's how that works. So th that now that you have this, if you click Ask here, when you drop the cabinet in, I'll just click OK so you can see it again, if I drag a cabinet in, it will pop up with this box and allow you to ask. It'll ask you if you want to add any outlet plugs. And if you click either one, it will, based on your parameters, it will add it in there. So yeah, that's how you use custom parameters for certain things, holes, hole drilling. Um, I'll show you just quickly how my operations are set in that uh, outlet one. So let's click left side, go to the part. Again here, product, it only activates if it's got an outlet on the left. Go to edit shape, and if you click your operations and go here, everything should be set by a parameter. So down from the top, it's e-box e width, so that's the width of it. This is the length of it, e-box height, part, uh, part left minus outlet height, so that will send it down to where you want it. And then this one here is part width minus e-box width divided by two, and that's because um, you're trying to get this location here, half of that, minus outlet width add-on. So depth, set at the door thickness so that it always cuts through. So yeah, that's basically it. You want to make, for this one, you want to make sure data logic's off because you don't want it to be, uh, you don't want it to be getting in the way there. It's just going to overshoot a little bit on the top and bottom if you click data logic. So this one, I want it to be exactly that size. So yeah, that's how you use custom parameters. Just a quick overview uh, and how to get it to work for you. Hopefully this video helps you and uh, please consider subscribing and uh, have a great day. Bye.